Hi, and thanks for logging on to the preview show delivered by FedEx Racing. Eight down and two to go in the chase, and for all intents and purposes, it is a two-man race. Vince Cellini here, and in Charlotte at the Hall of Fame Studios is TNT's Marty Snyder. And Marty, Tony Stewart's in full boxing mode. He put the gloves on, the robe on, he's delivering body <laughs> blows on the track to Carl Edwards. And Edwards is ahead on the scorecard, but it sure doesn't feel that way, does it? Yeah, I know it certainly feels like Tony Stewart has all the momentum right now, and now we head to Phoenix, and, you know, we have a completely different racetrack this time around at Phoenix, Vince. It's uh, nothing like we had in the past. In fact, I asked Steve Latard about it the other day, and he joked, the only thing that's going to work from your notes at Phoenix in the past is what hotel is best to stay at, the best way out of the racetrack after it's over with, and the best restaurants. That's really the only thing your notes are going to apply to Phoenix this time around. I asked Darian Grubb to really describe to me so I could describe to the fans what the racetrack is like, and he said, you know, it's like the, the front stretch is the same, the entrance to turn one is the same, and the exit of turn four is the same, but everything else completely different. It's bank coming off turn two. All the place where there was grassy area on the back stretch is now all pavement, and you come off that banking back down, then back into banking going into turn three. So it's going to be a completely different Phoenix racetrack and a one-groove racetrack this weekend at that. So different racetrack than we've ever seen at Phoenix that we're looking at this weekend. Yeah, there's really no point of reference. And this wasn't a nip and tuck. This was complete Joan Rivers redone, restructuring out at Phoenix. And, and for more on some of the changes we're going to see out there, let's hear from our own crew chief, Larry Mack, who talks about the changes and how it might affect qualifying. You know, not only did Phoenix International Raceway get a new surface with that repay, but it got a little bit of a configuration change. The dog leg in the back straightaway, they moved it out about 100 feet and gave it a little bit of banking. The grip is so good at this racetrack with this new surface, I think everybody's car is going to drive pretty good, and I think you'll be out there for a long time on a set of tires not worried about changing tires. But the speeds at this one-mile racetrack, with all that grip, that banking in the dog leg, Teams were telling me they were entering the corner at over 170 miles an hour into a fairly flat turn three and four. I think qualifying is going to be even more of a premium track position so important from the drop of the green flag. There you have it, Marty. I mean, speeds over 170. My question to you is what are you hearing from crew chiefs and the drivers about the adjustments they'll have to make this week in Phoenix? Well, and that's a tough corner that Larry Mack brings up, getting into three and four at Phoenix, which is very flat by the time you exit it, and they'll have the banking going into it. So brakes could be an issue this weekend. I think track position, as Larry Mack mentioned, will be a, a huge key. But one of the big things that crew chiefs and a lot of drivers I talked to, in fact, this is the first thing that Denny Hamlin mentioned to me about the track after he went came back from the test was the fact that there, it's like a roller coaster on the back stretch, and that doesn't mean they did a bad paving job, but you're up high on the banking as you exit two. You come down all the way off the banking at the bottom of the apron in the middle of that dog leg, and then back up the banking as you go into turn three. So it's three elevation changes up, down, back up again on the back stretch alone. Steve Lothar told me that's the biggest thing he's worried about. All that travel, how you build the shock package, and he thinks that's going to be the key. The guy who hits that the best will be the car that's the best, uh, the toughest to beat this weekend at Phoenix. So I think how you handle that back stretch, and again, the one grooveness of the racetrack. It's going to be so tough to pass that again, qualifying will be huge, just like Larry Mack mentioned. Well, you gave us kind of a roadmap on success. My question to you now is, which of these drivers will be able to do that? Who will best make adjustments to this new track that's been reconfigured and repaved. Well, I think if you're looking at the two-man head-on-head battle, I think, between Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards, you've got to give the advantage to Tony Stewart. And what I look at is, yes, in the spring, Carl Edwards did have the best car at Phoenix until he and Kyle Busch got in that big wreck. But when you look at the flat tracks recently, Tony Stewart certainly has had the advantage. Now, he won the race at New Hampshire. Clint Boyer ran out of fuel, but Stewart had a top-five car, and he had one of the best cars there all weekend long and Carl Evans really had about a 10th place car so when you go to the head-to-head -head battle I think Tony Stewart's going to have the advantage this weekend and I've been around Tony a lot lately I've never seen him in this kind of a mood he's so positive he's convinced this championship is his and I think this is the weekend he goes ahead of Carl Edwards, takes the championship lead. I think if there's one guy who could take advantage of it, it's Kevin Harvick. He should be uh, good enough to maybe finish in front of Carl Edwards, so I think Harvick could take advantage. But I tell you, all the guys are worried about this racetrack being one grooved and someone getting into a wreck. That's the first thing. Avoid all the wrecks. If that doesn't happen, I think Tony Stewart has the advantage. Yeah, it's hard to go against Stewart right now. He's driving with such confidence. And what a difference from before the chase when he was lamenting his chances. Maybe he was sandbagging yeah, us all, Marty. All right, it's time for us to uh, try to pick a winner here. 
And, and since the track is so different, it is difficult to have a point of reference. Larry Mack talked about how qualifying could be very important, so I'll reference Ryan Newman, who has qualified here in Phoenix very well, has won the pole four times. It's going to be difficult to pass, so qualifying at a premium, get yourself in a good spot and try to run good from there. I guess Ryan Newman, all things being considered, but now I defer to you, the real expert. Well, and I look at a guy, you know, when I say in the championship battle, Tony Stewart does have the edge over Carl Edwards. But in my opinion, for my money, the guy who's had the fastest car at flat tracks all year long has been Jeff Gordon. Clearly won it at Phoenix in the spring. But I think even you go back to New Hampshire a few weeks ago, you go back to New Hampshire in July, Jeff Gordon had one of the best cars. They haven't been able to put it all together recently. I like the run they had at Texas. So I'm going to go with Jeff Gordon, maybe a little off the board for some people, and I'm going to go with Jeff Gordon this weekend as the guy to beat. All right, anything can happen. And the one thing we haven't touched on is corner men for both Stewart and for Edwards. But <laughs> yeah. I guess we'll get to that perhaps next week for the final. Marty, thank you very much. I'm Vince Cellini, and everyone enjoy that race at Phoenix. Only two, two to go.